haven't played this at all. So, <laughs> I there's like a part of me that it started first with, oh, I should probably answer that. It started with laziness, but then I kind of liked the developer being there when like I was doing my very first experience with it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Guess I'm, did I just hear a purr? Uh, yes, I want she to... she purrs whenever you're. So long as you're standing still, she's happy, which means she purrs. Oh, okay. What what inspired this this game of yours? The game came from. Uh, I mean, it came from a lot of things. Jones on Fire was the game that came first, and it is where. If you look, the game has a similar visual style. It's kind of the programmer art version of this visual style. Oh. But I was able to execute on it, and the game turned out pretty well, and it had this neat feel to it. So we we moved on with those basic characters, but tried to put more visual polish and panache and stuff into the visual style. The game itself, the what it is, came from... I was doing one game a month, and the first month I was trying to work out how to do 2D side-scrolling in a 3D world, and I got that basically mm -hmm. working. And the second month, or was it... The, I think it was actually that month I had to make a game out of that demo and I had nothing so I like put a fedora on the person and then I used some shadow casting lights and I had a revolver system that was mostly done but you couldn't actually see it there, there was no UI so you couldn't reload it so you had four shots and then you were firing empty cylinders mm -hmm. so I had to make a game of some kind with a revolver that you couldn't reload. So I ended up making this noir story about only needing one shot and yada yada yada. And it was actually this kind of cool vibe oh. to it. So I <laughs> ran with that. I clicked back on the screen and almost shot Frankie. Sorry, Frankie. You can shoot Frankie. She doesn't mind much. <laughs> I don't mean to. It's just me like trying to click back on the screen and I keep shooting her. Mm -hmm. She's still there purring, though. Oh, what? Sorry? <laughs> she's still purring at me, though. Oh, yeah. She's happy. She's just happy she's around you. She is not judgmental. Well, that's good, because I'm probably gonna accidentally shoot her, like, a bunch. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, man. Twitch was showing me an ad, and for a second I thought it was a zombie movie, but no, that was a meth commercial. What? Oh, jeez. <sighs> it's disappointing. I was hoping it was a zombie movie. Oh, <laughs> Oh dear. Is this gonna be full of puns too? I'm really excited about oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh good, wash your hands. Who are you, old man? Oh I get to be rude too. So is there uh is it uh do the things I say have an effect on how people react to me or is it just for funsies? Generally speaking it's just for funsies. There's really no uh reputation system or anything. Mm-hmm just takes you down different dialogue paths. The reason, what you'll see is you can re <laughs> you can oh, re-enter a lot of dialogue paths, mm -hmm. which annoys some players, but the reason I made it that way was so that you could actually see all of the permutations the dialogue could take instead of yeah. wondering, ah, oh, well, what, what did I miss? Yeah, I never, I never really gave that much thought, but um, some friends and, and uh, I have been discussing making like a smut game for funsies. And I was trying to design the dialogue system, and that came up really fast, and it was something I never thought about. Like, if you make repeatable conversations, you can't make them have an effect. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you know, you start getting your stats all screwed up every time you have the conversation. Yeah. I'm gonna call him a hobo. You hobo. You guys working on anything else? Or, like, was this here? are you still working on this for a while? I uh, know, this is pretty much done. We're currently working on one little patch for it that'll make the gamepad input less janky. But, no, this, this is done. But we're, we've moved on to a game called Spartan Fist, which is a game about punching dudes so hard they explode. Oh, very nice. Same world, uh, somewhat similar art style, but it's going to be... That one actually will be voxels, but we're not going to do much. In... So a lot of people think voxels are Minecraft big cubic things, and they... no, Minecraft kind of, sort of, but no. Minecraft's giant blocks, that's not really what voxels are. Something more mm -hmm. like 3D dot game hero. That's voxels. Or, oh, that's such a cute uh, game. Voxatron. That's also voxels. And that's more the end of graphics we're going for. Specifically 3D dot game heroes. Though the disadvantage of that is it makes animation really hard, so we're going to go for kind of Raymond-style characters that have hands and feet, but mm -hmm. no arms or legs connecting them. Oh. See how that works. <laughs> 
it should be pretty cool. And it also lets us do all of the punching to be procedural so we can we can make it a little more comical, a little more interesting in ways that would look really strange if there was actually an arm there trying to do that motion. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, this poster of Juicip is I don't know if there's an H under there, but it's making me super happy. That is Giuseppe. Giuseppe. He's the mayoral candidate that is fighting for workers' rights. Oh, good job, Giuseppe. The, that cat, that poster, in fact, is actually fan art for an actual cat that exists in the real world who is named Giuseppe. Nice. And he actually wears a little tie. Oh. I wish our we cats would a... wear stuff. They get really angry when you try to put stuff on them. No, no, Giuseppe is a totally chill cat and he likes his little tie. Aw, that's so cute. He's, he's a very friendly cat. We had a, a fan cat competition during our Kickstarter and the best fan cat submissions. And the idea was you print out a, a, f- a foldable paper fedora and you put it on your cat and you take a picture. And the best of the pictures we got oh. got to be in the actual game. So there's the fan cats and Giuseppe, which are those. It just so happened that all of the fan cats ended up having foreign sounding names. So we have Giuseppe the immigrant and the fan cats are just about fresh off the boat. Uh-huh. Oh. Just worked out that way. Mm-hmm. We kind of split two very different play styles. Metroidvania players generally don't care about dialogue, and adventure game players generally don't care about platforming, and we're right down the middle. Mm-hmm. Still don't know if that was the best idea, but it did make for a unique game. I'm really digging the... Uh... I'm digging. I'm right out of the 70s. I like this view, like between the buildings. I really like how far back that goes. And I really like this transition. I don't know why. It really gets me, but it's like the 2.5D thing with like a dynamic transition like that feels really cool. Mm-hmm. And that was that that tech took a long time to get right and complicated everything with our cap with our camera and it just complicates everything. And that took us ages to get the tech. Ugh. But on so on the one hand, it's distinctive. On the other, it's the source of some player complaints because that does create limits on what we can do. For instance, we don't have an in-game map because of that. By creating oh, yeah. a world that works... Well, um, by creating a world that works that way, it cannot be mapped. It's, uh, it is it is beyond mapping. Even if we did map it, you wouldn't be able to see the path you can actually walk through the world, and if you could see the path you can walk through the world, it really wouldn't make a lot of sense because think there are areas that are close that you can't actually walk between. And, hey, it creates a lot of problems, but mm-hmm. it also makes a really distinctive game, so I don't know. <laughs> this, uh, I see this running theme where I keep getting mistaken for a man. Mm-hmm. Is that like a, is there, is that a specific, very intentional underlying theme? Uh, gender is a primary theme of this game. Oh, all right. You're, so the fedora is typically worn by men. Uh, the 1920s were not <laughs> very mm-hmm. PC or forward thinking in terms sure. of gender representation, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is a, so yeah, it's a primary theme in the game because of that. Someone on Twitter actually did a really good write up that really honest to goodness peeled the game apart and they got all the themes right and they got all the sub themes and the motifs i was very impressed that's awesome uh, trying to just scuff the floors i'm gonna scuff all the floors oh i like the insults there's lots of really good insults like in this oh pee on his shoes please be on his shoes yeah so i'm gonna guess that you're are you an agent carter fan because of her swank ass fedora actually no i haven't even seen it <laughs> really it's pretty no. good I've heard, have... like, one or two people that don't think it has the right theme because um, she spends the whole time having to be, like, sarcastic and, like, taking all the men's guff and all that kind of stuff and that, that the the way to get power is not through being a sarcastic per. I don't know. There, I've heard a couple complaints about it, but for the most part, everyone thinks it's very empowering for women and it's just a wonderful show. I personally love it. So... But yeah, her, her fedora is sexy as hell. Nice. Just ask how many people worked on this. Oh, uh, complicated question. There were about three full-timers and another three part-timers. And then one who did like a couple days worth of work, but he was the animator, so it was super critical work. Oh. Well, he the did well on the bouncies. 
Yeah, the the animation style, the bounciness actually comes from Lego Universe. Whenever we were working on that, we got tasked with figuring out how to animate rigid objects in a way that made them look like, you know, animated and alive. The mm -hmm. squash and stretch tech, the bounciness you're seeing, mm -hmm. is how we ended up doing that. So I ended up using that same style in Jones on Fire and then Hot Tin Roof to give the characters, to make them feel alive, even though, you know, they're, they're squares. Mm-hmm. Cute squares. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I like this confrontation I've got here with this cat. Yes, button. Exposing Frankie's terrible secret. What's going on? Frankie, what have you done? I'm like the worst investigator ever. It's just gonna shoot everything, see what happens. So you did uh, design, all the design, or just a bunch of the design and the programming, I right? I did the all of the programming. I did the conceptual design and writing. Most of the level design actually fell to Michael Nielsen, my mm -hmm. level designer. Uh, he's a lot of things. He actually came on Jones on Fire as a composer. Then he oh, became whoa. a designer. Then he became a level designer. Currently, we're pair programming, so I can teach him to be an engineer. So oh. he's, he, he, quit, he picks things up fast. <laughs> That's cool. All this, I love and hate all of those people that can just do everything. Like, it's no big deal. Whoa, if you, secret. Uh, if you hold it down, you'll get more of a spurt of bubbles. <laughs> Which makes Frankie happy. I can't stop, it's so cute! So, cool feature, but it makes a lot of things impossible. So, I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever make... If I ever made another game like this, I would probably never do 90 degree corners. Mm -hmm. I'd probably only do, you know, go back a layer, go forward a layer kinds of things. Since then, I could actually map it. <laughs> yeah. But this, this cannot be mapped. Or I, or I guess I could be very careful and only ever do. The, there are tricks I could pull that could guarantee things be mapped, but I would, I would have to plan it very carefully. I would mm -hmm. never do another game like this where we just kind of went into an area and went, eh, well, I don't know. This seems like a cool place to put a corner. Yeah. Sure, <laughs> put a corner here. Why not? Uh, wait, lights. Ugh. Well, uh, uh, it would make another game that you couldn't map. You just could not. I mean, yeah, I meant the corner, like, let's put one here, why not? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's the only point of playing puzzle games, right? Is so you're like, ah, I'm so smart, S-M-R-T. Pretty much. And uh, that's why we've tried to be very... Again, it's this divisive thing. Some players really like that we don't give the answers away. There's a lot of aha moments in the game. Other players get really frustrated. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, as the game gets more write-ups and such done, players and players can go online and say, hey, I'm stuck, how do I get through this? Hopefully that'll fill the gap. Mm -hmm. We were thinking of putting hint sis a, a literal hint system into the game, but it felt so ah, gross. It was ah, it was too forward. Mm -hmm. I feel like there's a really fine balance in hints, and like, because you can either take away all of the mojo, or you can not give enough of a hint and be frustrating. I like, mm -hmm. yeah. It's... And I don't think I've ever seen a game that actually got it right, and any game that I thought got it right for someone else it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So we ended up just no, nope. if you want a hint, you're going to go somewhere else, and hopefully that'll work for people. Pay attention to the dialogue. You never actually do any case solving. Frankie does everything. <laughs> you just ask her questions, and then she gives you an answer. Fair enough. So you're pretty much the, wor the world's most terrible investigator, and Frankie, the one that no one trusts, she's the actually good investigator. Nice. I don't think anyone's really mentioned that yet. So I guess that's a kind of standard thing in detective movies. The detective is often the idiot. So do you ever do you ever hop on t like Twitch and watch people play, or have you watched a bunch of people play the game? No, not really. I imagine I've a couple people, but I imagine that it would get like either frustrating or difficult when people are like stuck on your puzzle. Do you like want to tell them? <laughs> you always do, and you just can't. Yeah. That's one of the things you learn early on in player te in play testing and in watching other people play. You just you have to st stay quiet. You cannot say much of anything, otherwise you're putting yourself too much in front of the experience. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be such a such a fun or interesting or difficult balance to do is like watching so many people play and trying to decide when a puzzle is too hard, when it needs to be rehashed, or when it's like just difficult and frustrating enough. Mm-hmm. I'd constantly be, like, wanting to be like, oh, no, they aren't getting it right away. I, I should make it easier. Uh, but... Oh, it's a rat. Hi. 
Johnny the Horn Player. Oh, cute. Johnny the Horn Player is one of our uh, backer characters. Aww. He's actually the character for Nathan Madsen, our composer. Which is why he is the jukebox character. Uh-huh. How about something funky? Something real funky. <laughs> Oh, and he even plays with bubbles. Mm-hmm. All right, Frank, Frankie, Frankie, we got it. Frankie, we gotta go. Frankie. <laughs> so, what do you think of it, Odin? I think it's pretty cute. Do you think it's pretty cute? I think it's pretty cute. I'm being such a cheater and just clicking on everything until I get another option. <laughs> That's pretty much what you do. <laughs> the uh, choosing which clue to ask people about is as close as we get to inventory. Rub this against that puzzles. We tried to avoid those, because no one like. well, some people like those, but generally they're frustrating. My gosh. Odin wants to print the characters in Papercraft. That sounds adorable. It's one of the things we've toyed with doing is a thing for the physical box. Physical boxes? I forgot those exist! Yeah, well we've got to print at least some of them because we're they were a Kickstarter backer upgrade. Or mm -hmm. tier. We were going to work with IndieBox, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I want a little Frankie to sit on my desk. So perhaps I will try it. Or I'll just make her out of wood. <laughs> if you do, please send me the pattern or send me the p a picture of what you do. Sure that would thing. Be cool to I've see. never I've never designed papercraft. I've like kind of designed origami, but never papercraft, and I think it'd be fun to give it a try. Oh, I did it again where I didn't pay attention to what he said. Who are you? House tricks. I ask that to people sometimes. I ask them like house tricks and they, they have to like sort out whether I'm like insulting them or not. <laughs> I'm like, no, just, how are you doing? Old slang, not much used anymore. But it's fun. It should come back. A lot of things should come back. <laughs> Though, I don't know. On the one hand, fedoras were cool, but fedoras did kind of come back, but mostly... Oh, but in a pasty. weird way. They were like the short-brimmed yeah. ones. The trilbies. Yeah. Trilbies came back, not fedoras, which is a bummer. Though I don't know if I really want to see a neckbeard in a fedora any more than I want to see a neckbeard in a trilby. And Fair that enough. was most of the <laughs> folks that were wearing them, so. Unfortunately. Some people could really pull it off, like with, a, with jeans and like a, a vest, like it was a little bit toolish, but I don't know, I think it looked alright. Which is why when this game was originally out, some of the first comments in our community forums, almost all of them, were fedora jokes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Since, of course, it has fedora in the title. Yeah, I actually was gonna I was gonna include the whole title in the stream, and it got really long. Hey, look, I found a dump. There's a whole bunch of writing in the dialogue doc or a design doc about rat society and motivations and scratches, and a, a relationship with other rats and yada yada. And almost none of it's in the game. It just comes out in little bits and pieces of the dialogue. It really frustrates me whenever, for instance, in uh, Dragon Age Inquisition. Mm -hmm. a, lo a lot of writing that really should have just been world building that they left the players to discover contextually, they dump in these giant codex entries that you unlock and then no one really wants to read because they don't need to be in the game. But since someone wrote them, they decided, put it in the oh, game. Yeah. Something like Dark Souls is much better writing where all of that information exists, but they write the whole des design doc, they write how everything can interconnects, then they mostly throw that entirely away and they just use it for reference. All right, well, I would like to wander in and grab it, please. <laughs> the saving makes me giggle every time. That almost didn't make it into the game. I wasn't sure if it was too base in terms yeah. of humor, but people dug it, so we left it in, and I'm really glad we did. It's pretty cute. You have to go. That's totally cool, because I know you're a time zone ahead. I've actually got to go. So, That's folks, so good. Play, playing the home game, etc. It was nice to talk at you, and it was fun to see you play this. Thank you for joining me. I, I'm sorry that I was having so many struggles in the beginning. No worries at all. Uh, I hope you keep having fun with the game. Thanks. I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep playing it. Cool. Good luck. Have a good night. You too. Bye bye. Thanks for joining, and be sure to come back next week. I don't know what we have planned for next week, but be sure to come back for it. Bye! <laughs>
Don't know if anyone's going to hang out with me, but I've been wanting to play Ori and the Blind Force for a while. So I'm going to do it. Oh, this is going to be magical. Have food. Like, I don't know exactly what's going on, but it's absolutely breaking my heart. Oh god, and now there's creepies. Like, I might start crying. No. I won't cry. I'm not gonna cry. If she's dead when I get in there, I'm gonna lose it. Mom, I brought you food! Mom, I brought you food! Mom, I brought you- <gasps> stupid idea was to play this game. I remember thinking, oh, this is gonna be a really cute little game. No, it's a stupid sad game. Stupid sad game. <laughs>